All right, uh, this is just a really quick video to help people get started using Goat Tracker because this is a very cryptic and hard to understand tracker. Um, so, without further ado, uh, we'll start with how to make your first sound. Well, we got over here instruments and these tables down here. So, how do these relate to each other? Um, each channel, and internally, each channel. Uh, has a corresponding location, a corresponding wavetable pointer, right? Uh, location in each of these tables. And these tables are constant. These are these are shared throughout the entire song. These aren't per instrument, right? So each um, channel has a location it's currently at in the wavetable. And the wavetable, pulse table, filter table, these include instructions on um, how to change the waveform, pulse, width, and filter parameters. So this means that you might have, there, there are different ways you can change that pointer. Um, one is in the instrument parameters. So if this is one, every time, every time we play a note in a channel um, with instrument one, then because this is one here, when we play a note with this instrument, uh, it's going to jump, that channel is going to jump to that position in the wavetable, right? Um, we can also, if you look here in the help, which is uh, a great resource, right? If you look here in the help, uh, you'll see we have this 8, 9, and A um, commands, effects that you can use. And these also set the wave table pointer, right? So if you wanted, th and this is useful for um, pulse width stuff, then what you can do is you can set the pulse table position, and it'll execute a nice pulse width modulation program. Um, and the wavetable will just keep doing its thing and you get a really nice pulse table effect or a PWM effect. Um, but we're not going to do that just yet. So let's start like this. So the wavetable is going to jump to 1. So basically what this means, this 1 here says that's like a key down event. That means to start the ADSR. If this was 0, that would, you know, that's that you typically do 0 for percussion. You do like a couple with 1. And then a zero, and then an FF for st this. This FF, this is a jump instruction. So FF zero zero one, that will mean jump back to one, and FF zero E or zero E or that's not E. This means jump to E down here, right? Zero zero, that means stop, and that that goes also for effects, right? Because these work like a program. Every every step, right? Um, anybody who's trackers familiar with steps, every step. Um, the wavetable executes, you know, progresses. So if we're currently executing the wavetable and we're at three, then we're going to step to four, five, six, and then when we get to seven, it's telling us to jump to zero, which means stop, basically. So this, this would be like for percussion, right? You have some instructions that are, have the gate bit on and then the gate bit off. So that's really quick. Key down, key off. Key down, key off. Um, typically for instruments, we don't use the wavetable key off we do key offs in the pattern like that right so you got like an E and then your key off and then your E and then your key off right let's, just, let's do this control K right uh, right so this is what it sounds like I'm actually just gonna leave that running hopefully that doesn't annoy you guys so we can see here we make this one so one's a triangle, right? Um, a four is a pulse, but we don't. Right now, the pulse width is zero, so you can't hear anything. And the eight is noise, right? So um, that's really straightforward. And you can combine these things, like you can kind of combine two and three, right? Um, I've heard a lot of things about what does and doesn't work with combining, um, combining different waveforms. I tend to just stick to one, two, four, and eight, just the individual ones by themselves, because those, you know, tend to be the most reliable. Um, but you, you can get the others to work. All right. So, and then the other three bits in here. I, I only discussed the first one, the gate bit. The other three bits do mean something. Uh, there's something in there about ring modulators and things like that. I'm sure it's all described here in the help. Um, pretty sure it describes it right here. Uh, interesting. 
doesn't look like it does. I would see it just says waveform values. Bummer. All right, well, there's probably some said manual somewhere that describes how all that works. Certain bits, but bits change things. One, one is the one you need to know. If you don't do this, you won't hear anything. So, uh, two, one, right? That's our saw wave, right? Um, I'm just gonna make a sustain zero so we can hear our sound. So the pulse table works similarly. It's also a, it's also a program. Um, you can jump to one here, right? And we can set the pulse width to. I, I use A in the first column, the first nibble, to um, set the pulse width, and the remaining three are the pulse width. So that those range from just all zeros to all Fs. So obviously, eight is smack in the middle of that, and then FF00 means stop. So we make this a four, that means pulse. And then, so one and one, that means every time we play a note in the pattern, um, that channel is going to jump to one for the wave table and one for the pulse table, which are going to set these parameters and then stop. So, pretty straightforward. A little, a little, uh, a little roundabout, but it allows us a lot of flexibility. We can do some really cool things. So let's see how this sounds. All right, a nice square wave. Pretty typical. Um, we can use other pulse widths, like two, really narrow, just off center. Get us little harmonics in there. These also work like a program, so you can do. So what this program will do, and I'll, I'll describe this in a second. Um, so what this does is this sets the pulse width to seven zero zero, and then for ten steps, it's going to add twenty to that each step, and then for ten steps, it's going to subtract twenty. This e e zero that's negative twenty in signed um, in two's complement notation, and you can just do shift n and it'll do the sign to the sign changes for you so you enter a 20 and then shift n to negate that to get e0 which is negative 20 so this is going to for 10 steps it's going to add 20 to the pulse width 10 steps is going to subtract 20 from the pulse width and then here this ff02 that's going to jump back here to that right and that's that sounds but that's your very typical um, pwm uh, effect that's used a lot in sid music sid chip tunes uh, it's a good effect to know. Um, so come over here to our little one measure loop we got going. Um, now we play a lot of these notes like this, right? So notice they all they all start the same, right? Which makes sense. Which makes sense. Every time we play a note, it jumps here, so it sets the pulse width to seven hundred. And then, then starts doing the pulse width. And then next note comes, it sets it to 700, and then it starts modulating the pulse width, right? Um, which is fine if that's what you want, but sometimes it's not what you want. Nifty little trick that I like to use is you don't make the pulse table jump part of the instrument, right? So we set this as zero. This means that when this instrument is played, we don't touch the channel's pulse table position. And then in the channel, at the very start of the pattern, we we use the 900 effect to jump to row one of the pulse table. So what this means is this means every time the pattern plays, right, this 901, we're gonna, the pulse table is gonna jump. And there's also eight and A, which do the wave table and the filter table respectively. Uh, but nine is the pulse table. So this means for the pattern, right, this is how it sounds now. Right, it's subtle, I don't know, let's make this a little less subtle. So you can see it's not it's not starting over for every instrument. If we had start over, right? Make it obvious. See, so it's starting over, make a zero, and then it just plays. So it's pretty nifty. Uh, that's the pulse table, uh, and there's other stuff you can do with that. Um, it's all again, it's all described here in the help, uh, all the details. This is just to help you get started. So the last one's a filter table. I don't remember everything about the filter table off the top of my head, but I'll do the best to describe this. Again, we're going to do filter table position. We're going to make this one. Jump to a uh, one here. Uh, let me see if I can remember. So, I believe if you do one here, so this is uh, one, two, and four, right? Those are bits, one, two, and three. Um, one, two, and four, 
that corresponds to channel one, two, and three respectively, right? So two, that's channel two. Um, and then the left half is the waveform, is the filter parameter. So I believe this is, if we make this, uh, oh god, I can't remember. You know, I'm just, you guys will have to read the manual for that one. Uh, there's another, there's a good tutorial online that describes it. Let me see if it's in here. Filter table. Yeah, see, it describes it right here. Um, and you see it also is FF is jump. Uh, now, the only one that doesn't work like a program, because these work like programs, where it jumps and then it steps through it and jumps around, is a speed table, right? So, uh, and the speed table is just a static table of values. I don't know why they thought we would use all of this, because that is, that is a lot of speed parameters. But it's all there if you want to use it. Um, so I guess one last thing we can go over is percussion, particularly particularly the snare, and this is to show um, so sort of the robustness of um, the robustness of this system of using tables and things like that. So I'm just gonna real quick make an instrument here as a little example alright so every time we play instrument 2 every time we play instrument 2 it's gonna jump to 10 and 10 in the wave and pulse table so 10 here in the wave table, 10 here in the pulse table. Um, what this is going to do is just going to real quick, it's going to do noise for a step, noise for a step, square, square, noise, and then noise with the gate bit off. And it's right here, it's going to set the pulse width to a nice 50% duty cycle square. Um, and then these in the in the right column here, these are the relative, the, not the relative, I'm sorry. These are absolute notes. So if you look here in the table right side, right, 81 to DF, those are absolute notes from C sharp 0 to B7, right? So I'm doing, I'm doing C, B, B, B8, B, C, C, right? So let's, that's what that sounds like. Let's make these A's. All right, all right, nice little punchy snare. So... Let's see what our song sounds like now. Let me add the snare in there. Alright, pretty, pretty nifty little song. And then we can also, if we want, we can do arpeggios. Now, how do you do arpeggios? Um, because if you notice, the. Hold on. There's no zero effect. Right, there's no zero effect. So how do you do arpeggios? Uh, very, I mean, it, I've heard C64 music that has that. How do I do arpeggios, Alex? All right, well let's um, set up a simple square here, right? So we've seen this before. Sets a square wave, gate bit on, uh, pulse width of 50%. That's what that sounds like. So I'm going to add in three more steps here. And then I'm going to jump back. So what this does is this does 30, 31, 32, and then jumps to 30, 31, 32. And if you look here, um, 0 to 5F are relative notes. So this is, if we do 7 and then 3, right? Or 7 and then 4, or 0 CC, right? You've all heard these before. So I'll make this 7, 3. I'm going to. I'll make it sustain. Alright. Alright, sounds like.
kind of terrible, but whatever. Point is, it's the basics. You guys get to watch me uh, walk through this and explain how it works. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it, um, hopefully this demystifies a lot about Goat Tracker. Hopefully I didn't take too long explaining it. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff. Obviously I didn't go over anything about the Vibrato or this first frame wave or the, the hard reset parameter or um, anything like that. But I mean, there's manuals and things like that. Obviously there's this very rather comprehensive um, uh, rather comprehensive um, what do they call it help page there you just get out of that with f12 right it describes all the commands all the what all the tables do and things like that right lots lots of really interesting effects that I didn't even cover closely I didn't even I didn't even go over the order list up here but it's pretty easy you guys can figure it out right so let's do one 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 three 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 Oops. Yes. Two and two. Oh. Kind of wasting wasting my time right now. This is gonna sound terrible, but Let's see how it steps to the order list. Right. And each channel has its own order of execution in the order list. It's a rather unique system. I haven't seen anything like it, but it's probably based on some tracker from somewhere else that I've never used before. Um, but it's a pretty nifty feature. You can also have commands in here like um, R, right? This repeats the next one this many times. So if we wanted, we could have done this like, oops. R, whoops, R, R, 4, right? Or actually, we could have just done this like this, and this is just going to loop on 0 forever, 2 is going to loop on 1 forever, and this is going to go 3, 3, 2, 2. Right? So, there's a lot, it's, it's a surprisingly, um, uh, got a pretty complete feature set you know and it's got all the the stuff you might need you, you can obviously make selections you can uh, cut and paste um, you may have noticed I don't know if I pasted that right you may have noticed I uh, used you know control K found that one out by accident it splits the pattern up it cuts the pattern in half and splits it up so now you can edit you know made it into two and three here right so four is our first one and then I made this guy into two and three Another really useful feature. So let's say let's say I didn't leave myself enough room up here, so because I got some other instrument down here, right? I was doing this kind of thing. Um, I didn't leave myself enough room, and I want to add more to this instrument up here. So we go back to the instrument that's using it, and then you do the insert key, right? And now I, now I can now I have all this room down here to play with. We go back to the other instruments. You'll notice it changed. It updated instrument two to point to eighteen, which is here now. And update an instrument three to point to thirty-eight, which is down here now. So it keeps track of all your pointers. It also works for um, backspace key. Oops, not backspace. The delete key, right? So if we need to make room for ourselves by deleting a bunch of patterns, it just takes care of maintaining all that for us. Really nifty. I I don't think it edits updates. Oh, it does. See, it updated the um, the in pattern jumps. So. Um, really nifty feature. I'm surprised that it can do that because there's a lot of trackers that are much more robust than GoTracker that wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even come close to being able to do something like that. So it's a, it's a good um, good feature to know about. Obviously, as I said multiple times before, a lot of it, all the effects and everything are all described here um, in the help and there's resources online. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great tracker program. Uh, you know, good luck you know using it and everything can't wait to hear what people do with it um so yeah happy tracking guys